we've had a, a tremendous amount of fun covering what's happened to the communication system to, from, and between aircraft for the last couple of years because you think, well, you get an airplane so you can go someplace and talk to somebody. But while you're in the air, business can still be done. Absolutely. Things need to be talked about. Uh, you still got to make sure that there's dinner at the other end in a hotel and a rental car, or for that matter, that things haven't blown up at the office. So who better to talk to than GoGo -Go Business Aviation? Uh, Sergio Aguirre, uh, we welcome you first to Aero News, but tell us, what's new at GoGo? -Go? Well, first, thank you. Uh, very happy to be here. Uh, well, last week on Wednesday, we received our uh, STC uh, approval from the FAA for our new Ford GATG system, which we think is going to really address a lot of the, the, the demands that, that people have now in the air. Interesting, you talked about business and connectivity and how that has been one of the driving factors, but actually now what we have seen over the course of the last few years is that connectivity is no longer associated just with work. If you think about how we use our devices now, uh, connectivity is how we live our life. It's, it's uh, social media, it's, it's entertainment, it's work, it's leisure. So it's really now a very integral part of, of what we do. And so it's imperative that we stay at, uh, uh, stay up with demands of connectivity needs in the sky as well. Well, the old joke is that uh, you're, you're never far away from a need to communicate, much less uh, the communications devices that we all carry with us. Yes. But let's face it, they don't work so well at, uh, at flight level 350. Yeah. Uh, however, some folks have changed all that. Now, with this particular certification, what do you see happening to the market? Well, we see two things happening. One is we see that um, our install base of about a little over 4,000 active customers right now in business aviation will have the option now to upgrade their systems, which will give them about three times the capacity they're currently experiencing right now. Um, so some of the things that we can enable now when you have three times the capacity inside an aircraft is now the ability to uh, be a lot more liberal with some of the features like um, some of the, 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 the things like FaceTime, um, uh, the, the social the band, media. The bandwidth hogs. Let's the bandwidth hog <laughs> hogs, yes, there you go. <laughs> so now people will be a lot more free to use their devices the same way they do on the ground without some of those restrictions. So the, the capacity of having three times the, the, the the uh, capacity in the air will now open that up and, and it'll be a lot easier for people to use the system in the same way as they do on the ground, which is very imperative for user behavior pattern issues. For the average operator, what's, uh, what kind of investment from a standpoint of uh, resources, aircraft, downtime, install, and then operating is required in order to be up to, st up to speed with you all now? Yeah, well, we're, we're not the experts in installing it. That's right. why we love this AEA show because <laughs> Here is where we meet with our... Please uh, install me. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are the experts that right. are here. That's why we're meeting with them. Uh, the dealers that we've had for, for many years. Uh, typically what I've seen, whether you're talking about a large uh, uh, MRO or, or a uh, smaller MRO, typically we see that the downtime to install one of our systems is put in conjunction with a major mod. And so typically the aircraft are down a, a, about two weeks. but. That has to do with the overall uh, installation time of the maintenance that they're doing other, in addition to our, our particular thing. Uh, and it it's usually hovers in the area uh, a little over $100,000 uh, equipment and installation, maybe mm -hmm. 130, 150, depending on the aircraft and the complexity of what they're installing on and so forth. But um, very different from what we've seen in the past with some of the satellite-based systems that were oh. upwards in the many, many hundreds of thousands of dollars. So not only is the- An incredible downtime for the aircraft too. Exactly. Back in the day. Yeah, and, and, and the operational cost is, is it's much better as well, so, yeah. So where do you take this from here? Well, I mean, I've watched this growth cycle of yours. You've just, you just have not left anything alone for very long. So I've got to ask, even with a fresh certification, days old, ink still wet, where do you go? Well, we're already working on our next generation system. Uh, it, uh, we're very excited about it. The next transition, uh, our next generation system, which we have not named yet, mm -hmm. so right now it's still the next generation system, uh, we anticipate going live sometime in 2018. And what's unique about this system is that we are going to basically duplicate the same functionality you currently have with your, with your uh, smartphones. You'll notice as you're uh, roaming around driving that you'll see your, your, your service go from a, 
an LTE to a 4G network mm -hmm. bounce back and forth. So what GoGo is going to do is that we're going to deploy a new network, uh, piggybacking on our existing uh, ground-based infrastructure that will uh, have ranges up to about 100 megabits per second. And um, what we're going to use is we're going to do our existing, we're going to use our existing air-to-ground network, the 4 JTG system that we just certified, as a dual network. So as you're flying along the country, the the system will automatically connect to the fastest pipe available. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we are going to try to stay ahead of the demand curve of user base. We feel that that having up to technology of 100 megabits guaranteed and backed up by our licensed spectrum will be a, a very fail safe way of providing good coverage for the customers that will continue to stay in pace with the demands of the personal devices and how people are using the social media now with so much imagery. Well, Google has done some amazing work in this area. You've basically built a de facto standard around yourself. Uh, and of course, uh, watching the high-end commercial side now with an increasing number of, oh, go, go. Uh, it's certainly hard to ignore the fact that you've been a hard charger in this area. But for those out there operating in the GA and BizAv world who may not be that familiar with GoGo, -Go, let me ask you the ultimate question. Why GoGo? -Go? Well, so there's a couple different things. Uh, it depends on your market segment. I'm mm -hmm. going to go back first to your question about, or your, your comment about the airline world. Uh, so our current air-to-ground network uh, supports both the 4,000 plus installations that we have on business corporate aircraft mm -hmm. and a little over 3,000 on the airline side of the world. And what we've seen over time is that um, the demand for the airlines because of the quantity of passengers and the quantity of aircraft uh, is much greater. And Especially so, that bandwidth hog who's running the media company in, in 3C. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So one of the I've got that, my iPad, I've got my laptop, I've got my iPhone, I'm just going to suck it down. That's all there is to it. Bandwidth. Well, well I, I'm happy to say that now on those co commercial aircraft, you'll be able to do that without limitations and without affecting the, uh, the overall bandwidth capabilities for our business aviation customers. And the reason for that is because we're transitioning all of our airline partners over to, from the air-to-ground system, mm -hmm. over to our new satellite-based system called 2KU, which uh, we have over 1,500 uh, aircraft committed as backlog and a few hundred of those uh, on the KU net, or 100 now, that are flying. And as every aircraft from the airline world transitions from uh, an air-to-ground-based network to the satellite-based network, that's extra capacity that we'll be, get to use in the most congested corridor. So, it, so from that standpoint, um, we, are, we will start to encourage people with an air-to-ground system that can do 100 megabits and, an, and a satellite-based system that is already doing 100 megabits to do exactly what you said. Let that person in mm -hmm. 5C do all the video they want. We'll be perfectly comfortable with that. So uh, we're, we're very happy about that. But why GoGo, you asked? It's because of that. We, we invest millions of dollars every year on R&D, on our core technologies and on cru crucial technologies like antenna, um, Wi-Fi networks. It's not just the air-to-ground link mm -hmm. that you need. You need to have good antenna technology, you need to have good in-cabin Wi-Fi, and with now with streaming media and multiple people streaming, the congestion points can be the actual in-cabin network, not okay. the air-to-ground or the satellite-based network. So, Gogo is the only company, and I think the leading company uh, at least, that invests significant amount of resource staying ahead of the demand. We were the first ones to come up with an air-to-ground technology. We were the first ones to come up with a text and talk application so that people can use their own phone mm -hmm. instead of some uh, foreign dialing sequence over a satellite. Mm -hmm. So we understand what it is to, to manage voice, data, and entertainment in a cabin. So that's why Gogo. Outstanding. How do you... Do or how problematic at this point in regards to satellite systems are the uh, usual latency issues with satellite communication? So that, that will continue to be an issue. That's just a matter of physics. Uh, when you have a satellite at you know, 22,000 feet in the air, it takes a while for it to get there and back. Um, there are things that we do from a technology standpoint to mm -hmm. minimize the inconvenience to the passenger, uh, caching and other treks, uh, the trade if you will, some mm -hmm. of the magic behind the curtain that we do to minimize it. But at the end of the day, um, it's getting to the point where both with a combination of the techniques that we use to, to minimize that inconvenience and the use of the customers, the benefits outweigh it. And so it, it really is not an issue anymore. It, but there will always be a difference between a low orbit 
low Earth orbit satellite mm -hmm. or an air-to-ground system versus a geo. I mean, that's just part of the nature of the physics. And so. those systems are evolving by the day. Yes, and, and so we see things on the horizon that, that may really limit that. Uh, we're excited to see some of the new technology, satellite technology, some of the KU networks that are talking about low Earth orbiting because mm -hmm. those will minimize that to a greater degree. Especially with all the launch systems that are only too happy to put you anywhere you need to be. Yes. First thing they got to do though is get rid of all that clutter. It's going to be an interesting issue as we get further and further into uh, LEO satellite systems. It's going to be interesting. Um, I am a mid-level BizJet operator. I uh, don't have a decent solution for the boss to be able to talk to the office to find out what's going on to make sure that everything's ahead. Uh, I give you a call. What questions do I need to ask in order to estimate my needs, to understand what it's going to take to make the switch, and how will this change my operating my aircraft? Absolutely. So uh, some of the questions we'll ask is how many hours you fly, where do you fly, um, and the purpose of your flights. And that, that'll help us to kind of guide you towards a system. The way it will, having connectivity on your aircraft, the, f the, the, the first evolution basically is a level of productivity for the passengers in the back. But now we're evolving to a new state of connectivity. Now we're not just talking about connecting the passengers, but we're talking about connecting the crews. And some of the things that you'll see with some of our features and uh, applications that we're now enabling third party people, partners if you will, to provide enhanced information for the crews uh, to increase efficiency of operation, which either reduces costs or increases the, the, the overall safety and awareness of what's going on, not from a decision standpoint, but from an information standpoint as advisory for the, for the crews. That's the second part, and that is already going, and that, that evolution really started with EFBs. Mm -hmm. And the, what GoGo brings to that is now we're actually connecting those EFBs so that pilots not only have a good user interface and don't have to carry that bag of, of jet charts behind them, but now they have real-time information that they can communicate with their dispatchers on the ground and make intelligent decisions uh, with relevant, up-to-date information that they've never had. The last part of that is now not just connecting, we've, so we connected the passengers, now we're connecting the crews for operational efficiency, now we're talking about connecting the aircraft, machine-to-machine -machine type operations that will enable um, flight departments and third-party uh, operators uh, or, or uh, service providers to provide a much greater uh, level of, of automation and, and, and um, that will really change aviation. Everything from automating, potentially, you know, talking about, about things that still need to be certified and done, but um, there are agencies or uh, services right now that manage all your logbooks for you. Um, well, we know exactly when the aircraft oh, takes off. And where takes... were they 10 years ago? <laughs> You know, you have right now one of the biggest problems that we have in aviation from an efficiency standpoint is uh, mandated maintenance based mm -hmm. on hours and, and cycles and, and dates. And with connectivity and intelligence on the aircraft, we can now start providing engine manufacturers and airframe manufacturers with data real time so that they can go on a on condition type need. And I think that will be the next real big evolution that connectivity brings. And that's what we're excited about. There's, well, there's a... The obvious, the obvious follow-on to that then is, for the operators looking for this kind of capability, how do they get in touch with you? Well, we are very active. You can see we have a we have a web website. Uh, we are we have a, the best way is probably just to go to their to their current dealer or mm -hmm. to their OEM. We have uh, line fit uh, agreements with all of the aircraft OEMs, and we have uh, a very very extensive dealer network. And if all else fails, please go to uh, uh, gogobusinessaviation.com and we're there for you. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, Sergio, I really, really appreciate your time. I've, like I said, I've, I've had a wonderful time watching you throughout the years uh, when this was first brought up and discussed some years ago, and I remember some of the original discussions and the plans. And let's face it, it was a real interesting, arduous, rocky process <laughs> in the beginning, like all innovations and all, well, more important, truly disruptive innovation is. Yeah. So it's been fun to watch not only the process, but to see it, su see it succeed, and not only that, see it uh, innovate further. Thank, Thank you so much. I appreciate you your time. Appreciate Thank you. Aero News Network's coverage of the 60th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from New Orleans, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors.
Have you ever wanted big glass in your cockpit but didn't have the space? Now with Avidyne's IFD series, touchscreen GPS navigators, and our new IFD100 iPad app, having big glass in your cockpit is finally within reach 